1947. The British are leaving India. Exhausted by the war, overwhelmed by insurrection, Britain needs an exit strategy. But how do you get out of a subcontinent you've ruled for 150 years? Especially when long buried arguments burst violently into the open. The man sent to India to close down the British Raj and keep order was Lord Louis Mountbatten. No year of British rule in India would produce more bloodshed than the last. I am under no illusion about the difficulty of my task. I shall need the greatest, the greatest goodwill, the greatest goodwill, Charles. I shall need the greatest goodwill of the greatest possible number. Popinjay? Yes, but uh, a rather splendid Popinjay. <laughs> I think Mountbatten brought with him all the, well, all, all the background. I mean, when you think he was seven years old when he visited the Tsar of Russia, from a small child he'd had this sense of occasion. War hero and cousin of the king, Lord Mountbatten had liberated Burma from the Japanese. With his wife Edwina, the millionaires who had once blazed in London society, the Mountbatten's were a striking choice to end British rule in India. We had this tremendous feeling that they would work in tandem. You had this feeling that they were a couple. In March 1947, the couple arrived in Delhi with a reputation for speed of action and a most un-British sympathy for Indian independence. I think everyone felt this is it. I think there was a tremendous sense that this is the beginning of something which is going to be successful. British India was a country of 400 million people belonging to many religions. Two groups stood out, the Hindus, who were the clear majority, and the Muslims. For centuries under the British, they lived side by side in peace. Mountbatten's challenge was to end British rule and prepare for a smooth transfer of power to this gigantic and diverse nation. He had just 18 months to complete it. For the last time in history, a Viceroy begins his term of office as Lord Mountbatten takes the oath of allegiance from the Lord Chief Justice of India, Sir Patrick Spence. This is not a normal Viceroyalty on which I am embarking. His Majesty's government is resolved to transfer power by June 1948. Now this means the solution must be reached within the next few months. I am under no illusion of the difficulty of my task. I shall need the greatest goodwill of the greatest possible number. Today, I am asking India for that Goodwill. The objective was very clearly stated, and it was, uh, in fact, brutally stated. So whatever happens, we leave this country on such and such date. In a country that's really rather laid back and uh, inert. I mean, none of us had worked that hard. He made his ADCs work, he made his staff work, and the Indian office work. Even the domestic servants had to be on their toes. People will say that's not the way the last Viceroy did things, nor the one before, or the one before that. Viceroy's door opener, Viceroy's chicken plucker, Viceroy's cushion puffer. You see? We need to cut down on stuff. And the number of banquets. It's quite obscene the way we're expected to gorge ourselves while there's a famine in Bengal. Thank you. Yes, I see. You know, there is much to be said here for continuity. Oh, I don't think so. I always found continuity to be the most overrated virtue in the Navy. They were 
extremely different from people who had gone before and made a very special effort, I think, to do all this on a basis of friendship and understanding. I know who I must meet first, Mountbatten told his staff. This was the man previous viceroys had come to see as their most dangerous enemy. Mahatma Gandhi had embraced the poverty of his countrymen and dedicated his life, much of it as a political prisoner, to getting rid of the British. In March 1947, he came to Mountbatten with a vision that Hindus and Muslims would now rule India together. They, they said I would find you out here. Edwina Mountbatten. Oh. I could have waited in the cool hall, but I was curious to see your Mughal garden. It's your garden, Mr. Gandhi. We are merely the trustees. You know, for the Mughals, the garden was a glimpse of heaven. They drew inspiration from Holy Quran, modifying and adapting what was found to make a paradise on earth. All elements perfectly blended. The gentlemen of the press are here and would like us to pose for photographs. Oh, then we must show them our best faces. The extent of Hindu-Muslim distrust was referred to by Gandhi throughout his life. He called it the question of questions. It's very hard to deal. But he felt that this was a question that had to be tackled because Hindus and Muslims had to live next to each other. They were neighbors in hundreds of thousands of Indian villages. There was no way out except some kind of coexistence. Gandhi's commitment to Hindu-Muslim unity was one that Mountbatten shared. But in 1947, that unity was under enormous stress. That is the time when the Muslims began to fear. They said, as long as the British were here, we were all the same. But now, if this is going to happen and it's going to be a democracy, then we will be a permanent minority. And what protection do we have? At that point, they couldn't trust the Hindu. 